So, Peter, what I really liked about this film was the premise of superheroes as ankle biters, or for <laughs> ankle biters. Um, how was the premise for Rise of the Guardians first pitched to you? Uh, basically kind of that. Uh, there was, you know, Bill Joyce had had this idea that he was exploring in his books that there were al an alternate history and alternate mythology for these characters that everybody thinks they know, but, you know, you don't really know. There's this whole secret world and sort of this, uh, this, this epic history behind them, and that was really intriguing to me, along with the idea that you know, you don't just like these characters like characters out of a book when you're a kid. You believe in them. You have a real emotional relationship with them. So to me, that was the really fascinating part of it. And you have history as a storyboard artist before mm -hmm. you worked on, on the film. Um, how crucial was this experience when you were visualizing the world the Guardians were going to be set in? I think absolutely crucial because, uh, you know, being a storyboard artist, working on a you know, wide variety of different films, kind of over and over again, you're just training yourself to visualize just about every just about every situation you can imagine. So when it came to you know setting these fantastic characters in a pretty real world, I felt I felt pretty prepared that we could go a lot of places and do a lot of things, you know, and and, uh, and be able to do it economically and and pretty realistically. Uh, one of the things in the film that really appealed to the little boy in me was mm -hmm. all the modern touches. Um, I really loved Santa's sort of pimp my sled style <laughs> style sleigh. Um, how important was it for you to see the film set in the modern world? I know the books were set, you know, sort of 300 years before, weren't they? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, they, they all, the books all deal with the history and the mythology and the backstories, all of which, you know, we knew we weren't really going to have time to properly address in one movie about these guys. So uh, the thing I liked about it was the notion of being able to say, hey, okay, we're saying these, these characters are all real. We all accept that and we believe in it. And we wanted to make the world as real and as relatable and recognizable as possible to kids watching it now, which is why you know there's there's you know there's the paints kind of crumbling and there's telephone wires and there's you know it's it's not an idealized perfect kind of a greeting card city. It's like you could step out your own front door and be in that same world, and that's exactly the the feeling and the the message we kind of wanted to get across. Cool. Um, I'm aware that two notably big names were involved mm -hmm. in the film, in Roger Deakins yes. and Guillermo del Toro. Um, they both have a really richly visual style, don't they? What yeah. influence do they have on the finished product? Uh, plenty, plenty. You know, uh, for for Guillermo's part, he was uh, he was more an inspiration on the story side of things. We we did a, a lot of work on story structure and. Uh, uh, the, the, the flow of the story with Guillermo, and he was really, most of all, he was an inspiration. I mean, when you're, work, when you're working on an animated film, it's easy to kind of get lost in the weeds because it takes so long and the process is so meticulous, and Guillermo was great about getting us to hold on to the, the things, uh, the dynamics of the story that we always loved. And Roger, I mean, you know, the whole idea of uh, bringing reality and, and a grounded look to the world and to doing things with light, basically, that hadn't been done before in an animated film. Uh, were, were things that I absolutely wanted to do. He's, I think he's just, he's just a brilliant, brilliant guy. Really great, really sweet man, and uh, uh, really is passionate about animation. He loves it. He absolutely loves it. Uh, I saw the film earlier in the week. A, a really amazing new Dolby. Um, oh, screening room at, in was it the Atmos? Uh, yeah, yeah. And it sounded fantastic. Yeah. Um, you know, Pitch's voice sort of flies around yeah. at certain points, and. Andre Desplat's music sounds yeah. amazing as well. Yeah. I was wondering uh, how important, obviously the 3D is very important, but how important is the sound to complement that for you? It's crucial. Sound is always, uh, it's always, you know, a huge percentage of the way you feel about any film. The, the score too, I mean, Alexandra's music mm. is so beautiful and so, you know, uh, epic and rich and playful. And uh, we had uh, Richard King, the sound designer who did things like Master and Commander and The Dark Knight and uh, working on the sound with us, I think it did a fabulous job. And it was—it's all about you know both the sound and the 3D. We want to immerse people in the story. We want to surround them with the reality that we're creating. And I—I uh, uh, I, I think uh, all these guys did an incredible job in helping us do that. Mm. Um, now I have to come on to the cast. You've assembled mm. an astounding cast yeah. for this film. Um, how do you go about deciding who's going to play these really you know, important mythical characters for children? Yeah, well, the first thing we did really was kind of try to nail down what their personas were going to be. And we really worked on making them very specific, very, you know, as real, uh, quote unquote, as, as we could to, to make them more relatable. And once we did that, then we said, 
we kind of went, okay, what actors really embody those 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 attributes? And after that, it was it was kind of easy, and uh, we were really lucky in that our first choices all said yes. And finally, um, one of the overarching themes in the film is the importance of being believed in, mm. you know, for everybody involved. And yeah. how important was it for you to apply that to all the characters, including Pitt, who's obviously the villain, yeah. but, you know, he has his issues there as well, doesn't he? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the great thing about that was it gave us a, an opportunity to contrast Pitch and Jack, who both want exactly the same thing in the movie. I mean, in another world, you know, had things gone a different way, Jack could have ended up just like Pitch had he not seen the light and chose to, you know, pursue what he wanted in a selfish way rather than a selfless way, which is the way the Guardians do it. So it's, uh, you know, I, th I think it's uh, it's one of those classic sort of epic stories. You've got the shadow and you've got the light. And it's really, uh, it's it's really, there's a lot of classic themes that we deal with. It's it's sort of, you know, uh, uh, it's kind of storytelling in a, in, in a real mythic sense, but it's done in a way that, you know, kids can get it. It's done in a... We were looking at like Star Wars and Wizard of Oz and things like that to do this sort of uh, fairy tale epic. Peter Ramsey, I really enjoyed Rise of the Guardians. Thank Great. you very much. Thank you so much. Cheers. Appreciate it.